welcome to our home. Please come in and join us for a little while as we get together in the Word. Welcome to our program, From House to House. I'm Carol Brooke, and I'm inviting you to join us for a time in the Word of God. We are in an, a 28-part series. Yes, I did say 28. It's a little bit length in that sense, but we're covering some important issues that we would find in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter about times and seasons, which is the name of this particular series. Today we're going to do lesson number... 14, we're going to call this one Together Stones. Last time we talked about stones that needed to be cast away, we needed to get rid of. This time we're going to think about stones we need to gather, thinking of the spiritual application of that as believers. Okay, ladies, we're, we're grateful to have your participation with our filming. Let's turn in our Bibles now and let's get our backdrop of text, which is Ecclesiastes 3. Today we'll look at verse 1 and verse 5, reading from the Amplified. It says, to everything there's a season and a time for every matter or purpose under heaven, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Remember, we're focusing on the fact that there's a time Within a season, there's a purpose for these seasons that God allows in our life. And there's 28 of these seasons that are mentioned here in this body of text in Ecclesiastes 3. The one we want to focus on here is that there's a time to gather stones. A time to gather stones. Now, when you think of the subject of stones, you're thinking of, of that representing such as something that has strength, because rock material is very strong. Something that has constancy that will endure and last. Something that's uh, more unmovable in the storms of life. These are things, when you're talking about stones, that would be more or less symbolized in that subject. So let's begin by thinking about the kind of stones we want to gather. I think it would be great if we gathered some worship stones, don't you? such as they did in the Old Testament in the days of David and of Solomon when they built the temple so they had a place to worship God. So let's gather some worship stones. Let's look, ladies, hang on to Ecclesiastes 3. That's our main text, but let's turn out now to 1 Chronicles, your Old Testament, chapter 22, verse 2 in the Amplified, and we're going to read about David gathering and having gathered some fine stones to build a temple to worship God. It says, David commanded to gather together the strangers who were in the land of Israel, and he set stone cutters to hew out stones to build the house of God. He was in a position of authority as king at that time, and so he knew already that God had said he couldn't build a temple to worship God, that God was going to allow his son to do it because David had been too much of a bloody man to do with warfare. And uh, Solomon would speak more of, as his name means, peaceable one. It would be more of a time of peace and what David knew with all the wars. So he would be the one that would build the temple, but David wanted to have some part in participating, as most parents do, even though their children are involved in projects. And so he began to get materials prepared. And one of the things he had prepared was uh, great stones to build this beautiful temple with that was going to be for the God that he loved so much. So he had the stone cutters go and hew these out, no doubt, of the mountainsides and begin to prepare the rock material to build with. 
Not only did he do that, but then as Solomon, his son, took over the throne and became king, we read how that he continued that process of preparing these great stones to build the, the temple, um, uh, Solomon's temple. Now, ladies, uh, I'm going to have you turn to 1 Chronicles, the 29th chapter, verse 1 through 3. And we're going to read there about Solomon gathering stones. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. For the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and brass for things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and wood for things of wood, onyx stones... And stones to be set, glistening stones, and of diverse colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble, stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have mine own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God. These were beautiful stones, selected stones, not just any stone would do, because he wanted to give his best to God. And moving on down into First Kings, ladies, with me, move quickly to the fifth chapter, verse 17 through 18. Now Solomon moves on to this, the scene, and he completes this. It says, the king commanded, referring to King Solomon now, and they hewed and brought out great costly stones in order to lay the foundation of the house with dressed stone. Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders and the men of Gabel did the hewing and prepared the timber and the stones to build the house. And of course, they're speaking of the house of God. So this was in the natural, this was in a practical sense. But these stones were huge, they were costly, they were, were hewed out, and they were wonderfully prepared. And in the Amplified Bible, ladies, it brings out a footnote that some of those big stones that were gathered for Solomon's temple still remain to this day. In fact, one of them has measured to be tw uh, 39 feet long. Now picture that. That is a huge stone. Can you imagine what it took? They didn't have the modern day equipment that we have today to use to move heavy things. But just imagine what a challenge that was to build this temple out of stones, perhaps as huge as this one that they have uh, that is still visible, 39 feet long. That's quite a stone. That was in the natural sense. But you know what? Today in the New Testament, we are likened to being the same thing. In the spirit, we are a temple. We are a place inhabited by the Holy Spirit. And the Lord wants to fill his church, his temple, with the Holy Ghost so that the works of God can be manifest, that men's lives will be dramatically changed for his glory and for his praise. And the scripture uh, makes clear that God no longer dwells in the temple's made with the hands of men. But it's a habitation for God through the Spirit, you see. In Acts 7, verse 47, though we won't turn there, that's what it says, uh, a God that God doesn't dwell in temples made with the hands of men anymore. And the temple that he now has is a spiritual edifice, or that which means something that is built up. And that is a body of believers. Let's look, ladies, in the New Testament now, and we're going to look at 1 Peter, the second chapter, verse 4 through 6. <clears throat> and there the scripture says, Come to him, then to that living stone, which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen and precious in God's sight. And going down to verse 5, it says, Come, and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. For a holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood to offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. For thus it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion, a chosen, honored, precious, chief cornerstone, and he who believes in him, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him, shall never be disappointed or put to shame. And so... What we're seeing in the New Testament now, it's God's will and God's plan that 
he being a living stone, that we also will be considered as living stones. Of course, this is a symbolical thing. That we are being built, you know, stone by stone, stone upon stone, stone beneath stone. You know, wherever we're placed in the body of Christ, we're going to be beneath some others. We're going to be above some others. We'll be beside some others. But it's all as stones being built and put together. This becomes very real to me because um, my husband ba and I, when we were young, we built our own home with my brother's uh, uh, ability and help. And we did that with slump block. And so it's somewhat the same process whereby, you know, piece by piece, block by block, you have your foundation, you begin to, at the corners, draw a string line and begin to fill in the blocks in alignment with that string that matches the level of the corners to keep your lines of blocks straight and in alignment, one upon the other, beside one another, above or beneath others. All blended in. As children of God, we are like these living stones in this building, this edifice of worship to God. And yes, we may serve places beneath others, or we may be required to minister above, down to others, not as being better than, or beside others. But we've got to learn to be compatible. You know, we can't just be off one rock on a mountainside all by ourselves, a building for God. We've got to be fitted together, as the scripture says in Ephesians. We are fitted together by the Holy Spirit. And sometimes God's got to knock some rough corners and edges off of us so that we can smoothly fit with others, right? Have you found that sometimes it's hard to work with your brothers or sisters in Christ? It's because maybe you've got some rough edges that need to be sanded down, or maybe they do. But we are fitted together for a habitation for God through the Spirit. But, but Jesus is the chief corner stone. He is a living stone, and we're called to be also living stones. We are that temple today, even as David and Solomon prepared this grand, grand edifice for God's presence, a place for God to be worshipped. Today, we are fulfilling that spiritually. Ladies, Isaiah 28, verse 16, the Amplified, it says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm laying in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of sure foundation. He who believes, trusts in, relies on, and adheres to that stone will not be ashamed or give way or hasten away in sudden panic. I'm so glad that our foundation is in Christ is a sure foundation that we have been built upon. We have... We have put our faith into a solid foundation and the chief cornerstone who sets the mode and the measure for all the rest of that edifice is Jesus Christ. And he has been a tested stone, a proven stone. And not only that, he is a precious stone. Amen. And we don't have to be uh, ashamed and we don't have to give way and hasten away in panic, the scripture says, because the foundation is sure. The scripture says the foundation is sure having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. It says that in Timothy. In Ephesians, we're going to read that, ladies, and it will speak more about us being a part of these stones that are gathered. Oh, I'm so glad that as a little child, the Holy Spirit gathered me, and he put it up on somebody's heart to reach out for me because my family couldn't provide me that. But God touched a heart to really be concerned about me as a little child and bring me into the kingdom of God so that I could be a part of this habitation of God for the Spirit. Aren't you glad, child of God, as you listen to me today? Can't you just say, oh, amen, Carol. I'm so grateful to God that I have been gathered as one of these stones. And yet, as we sit here today, so grateful, we need to look out our windows and say, oh, there's someone going down the road. There, There's my neighbor. There's my relative. There's my my." Uh, maybe a fellow employee, someone I connect with, and, and they've not been gathered yet by the Holy Spirit to be made a part of this wonderful habitation for God by His Holy Spirit. And we need to pray. We need to reach out. We need to do what we can do to help be hands extended in Jesus' name, together in more stones to be living stones, not dead stones, but living stones in this temple that He's building that's going up, 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 up to more floors, more stories. 
to be filled with his presence. Ephesians 2, verse 20 through 22, ladies, it says, You are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ, Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined, bound, welded together harmoniously, and it continues to rise, grow, increase into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, consecrated, and sacred to the presence of the Lord. In him and in fellowship with one another, you yourself also are being built up into this structure with the rest to form a fixed abode, dwelling place of God in, by, and through the Spirit. Oh, yes, what a privilege that we have been gathered. But let's not be selfish. Let's think about those that yet need to be gathered and do what we can do. You know, there was a day when Elijah gathered up the stones of the altar that had been all broken down and destroyed. And he gathered stones to build an altar. We need to gather stones to build an altar of worship individually with God. Let's turn again, ladies, to 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, verse 31 through 32. In the Amplified, I'm going to read that, and we'll see how Elijah gathered some stones. It says, Then Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones Elijah built an altar in the name and self-revelation of the Lord. He made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. So here we have this picture where Elijah is gathering up these stones and he's going to build an altar to offer a sacrifice up to the God that he loved and that he served. And you know, when Elijah would build an altar and put a sacrifice up on it, the power of God would come down. The glory of God would come down to receive his sacrifice. Sometimes by supernatural fire, it would consume the sacrifice that he presented unto his God because his God is our God, a living God, an answering God, a hearing God, a seeing God, a knowing God. And you and I today, we need to build our own private spiritual altar. I'm not saying you have to have exactly a physical altar. It wouldn't hurt if you did have a place maybe in your home or somewhere where you connect with God faithfully, daily, <clears throat> a place where it's easy for you to get in tune with the things of the Spirit. But in our hearts, we need to build an altar, an altar of dedication to the Lord. I remember as a child in the house of God, we heard a lot of preaching to the effect of how we needed to not only receive Jesus as our Savior, invite him into our life, but we needed to dedicate our life to God, which means to have your life set apart holy unto the Lord, that that is the main focus of your life, and that's what your life is all about, is your destiny to be a child of God, to be used of God, to fulfill your place in the body of Christ for the sake of the kingdom of God and the promotion of the gospel to the nations. And so we were often called to the altar to come and pray or to be anointed, to dedicate our life to God, to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing to go where you say go. I'm willing, Lord, to do what you say do. I'm willing, Lord, to say what you tell me to say. And so we were often made aware of the need of dedication and of consecration, of consecrating our life to God again, which means, in the sense, setting your life apart as holy, as a vessel unto God. You know, in Timothy, it speaks that in, in this great house that God's going to have, the spiritual house which we, we form, it says there's going to be vessels there, vessels unto honor, but there will also be some vessels that are to dishonor. Oh, I want to be a vessel to honor, don't you? I'm sure you do. We don't want to end up being in the house of a great king, but being a vessel that dishonors him. It says that in that house, great house, of course, this is symbolically speaking and spiritually speaking. It says there'll be vessels of gold. That would be ones that's really been tried and tested by fire. But they've come out of that test and that fiery trial as pure as gold. They've been refined through the tests. There'll be ones of silver, which is, which is a wonderful metal and a material, but it's not as valuable as the gold is, but it's still very valuable. And silver symbolizes a symbol of redemption. There'll be vessels of silver. And it goes on to speak, there'll be vessels of wood and of clay and, and uh, more inferior materials, of lesser materials. 
It doesn't mean that we personally are better than other or God has respect of persons, but it's a matter of qualifying. It's a matter of dedicating your life to God and saying, God, I'm willing to go through the fires if necessary so that the dross in my life will be purged away and my vessel will be at least a silver vessel to show thy redeeming hand in my life. Or it, it, God, I prefer that if you can give me the grace that I can go through the fiery trials, that I would become a vessel of gold in your house to honor and glorify you. And so <clears throat> there are stones that we need together in our life and give as it were to God an altar, an altar that he can receive the sacrifice of our life laid upon it. And there's things such as not only dedication and consecration, but what about commitment? You know, I feel sorry for some of our pastors. In a way, I've always been glad I wasn't called to be in the role of a pastor or pastor's wife because, you know, they're, they're finding it difficult, at least here in America, to find individuals who want to commit to anything. They want to receive, they want to benefit, but they don't want to commit. So it's hard to get any really working hands of people who really want to pitch in and help that you can count on that will be faithful. Uh, People just want to, when it's convenient for them, do a little thing for God. But you know, to really follow after Christ, take up your cross and follow him, it means commitment. Commitment, which is uh, you sign in your obligation of willingness to follow through and be accountable. Faithfulness is something God's looking for. He didn't ask that we be fantastic servants, but he asked that we be faithful servants. And some of us are like just an old plodding old plow horse. We're just plowing, plodding along day after day in the path. But at least we're there. You can find us if you had to look for us. We're out in the field of the Father doing the Father's business. We may not be fast. We may not be furious. We may not be fantastic, but we're still being faithful, even some of us after many years. So that's the high calling is to prove to be faithful. These are the kind of stones you want to gather and build your altar to God as you dedicate your life upon it to him as a sacrifice. Because the scripture tells us in Romans that we, we are beseeched. In other words, I beg of you, my brethren, that, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God, which is but our reasonable service. Isn't that what it says? Another stone that we might gather to build this altar to God is one of godliness, godly living. God does not appreciate a polluted sacrifice. He wants a clean, sanctified vessel. And so, child of God, I encourage you, let the Holy Spirit sanctify in your life and, and get out the dross and get out the ungodly things that are not Christ-like. And of course, that takes time. That's a process. But let the Holy Spirit keep working on it until the painting is through. What about faith? That's another stone we need to gather. The stone of faith to build this altar unto God with. What about a spirit of willingness? Yes, uh, that's a good stone that we need to gather and put in this altar that we're building unto God. What about obedience? Sometimes we're willing, but we don't follow through. We're not obedient. Or sometimes we're obedient and we're not all that willing, but we're obedient. We grit our teeth, but we're obedient. So the Lord would have us gather those kind of stones. Think about the kind of stones that are goodly things that could be added in your altar of dedication as you give your life to God. These are stones that need to be gathered. You know, David gathered some stones. We won't turn there, ladies, but in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter in the 40th verse, David gathered stones to what? That he might attack Goliath that represented satanic powers as that horrible creature, that giant taunted and tormented the children of God day after day, harassing them. God used that young man, little David, and he took his sling, but he gathered those stones out of the riverbed. And those stones had been smoothed off by the years of the water running over those stones. And it smoothed out those stones that perhaps when they first fell into that riverbed or were, were washed into that riverbed, they were rough and coarse. But the waters of time smoothed them over till they were just perfect and right. That when David put them in his sling and he slung it, and it hit right in the center of the forehead of the giant and brought Goliath down, a symbol of satanic power. That stone was an item that God had anointed 
child of God, maybe you're like in the riverbed of life and things are flowing over your life, and, but it's smoothing you down. It's smoothing you down. God's getting you ready for a time when you will be used to defeat the powers of darkness. God is preparing individuals for battles against the enemy, but he needs some of us as stones to be smooth. We need smooth stones for God to use effectively. Prepared for battle, prepared for victory. And I want us to read, close with this in Luke 19, verse 40 where the stones were referred to, and it says, And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. What was happening? The disciples were praising and glorifying God, and the Pharisees got mad and said, Shut them up. Make them be quiet. Make them be quiet, Lord. Make your followers be quiet. And the Lord said, If they are quiet, these stones are going to immediately cry out. Praises to God. Well, if we failed to worship God, God would even allow the stones to cry out praises unto him. They're handy volunteer stones. Oh, let's worship our Lord as living stones. Let's lift up our voices and praise to him. Gather some stones, good stones. Next time we'll talk about there's a season to embrace, to embrace. God bless you, I pray. Amen. My Program copies available. Full set of lessons on CDs, $49. DVDs, $69. At $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. Original Carol Brook song album. Audio cassettes, $10 each. CDs, $14 each. At $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. For orders and support gifts, call toll-free 1-866-777-4748 or call 1-619-445-0751. For more information, please contact Carol Brook Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1909, Alpine, California, 91903. On the World Wide Web, visit carolbrookministries.com. Email carolbrook at carolbrookministries.com. Prayer line numbers are 1-541-592-4539 or 1-619-401-9389.